Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Got a great video for you today, but first we want, we want to let you know about the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Uh, that's the place that's going to help you mitigate the Kayfabe effect the most, and depending on the level of support that, that you give, man, you're getting all the videos, plus a live stream recording session of us recording these videos on the Patreon. So check out those levels, see what you're comfortable with, support the channel. Uh, you're still going to get videos every single day no matter what doesn't affect the channel in any way but we wanted to let you guys know about that and also these vids are brought to you by the comic books that we make this is our bibliography of books that we have out there uh red room is the current project i'm working on two trade paperbacks that are out there four hip-hop family trees three x-men grand designs and one uh solo uh whizzy wig hardcover jimmy has street angel comics lots of those out there pick your poison new one forthcoming 2023 collecting uh the the og stuff uh plain jane's hulk grand design is going to be coming out uh sooner than later uh support the books support the channel we can keep bringing you vids and today we have a real special one for you while on my travels to japan jimmy uh when i was there last last trip I saw these at, at the in the uh, Kinokuniya bookstores. There were these slipcase Studio Ghibli. I can't read that right. <laughs> so I didn't exactly know what it was until a homie towards the end of the trip was like, oh, these are these book collections of all the storyboards from Studio Ghibli movies. I'm like, what? Because here's the problem. Nothing is expensive in Japan. They sell fucking millions of these things and, and it the cost gets brought down a lot. So it's about the weight in your bags and your bag limits that you could bring on airplanes and stuff <laughs> and shipping costs, right? So this time, with that knowledge in mind, these are some of the first things I grabbed. And I got about two dozen of them uh, because to me, first off, getting to see Miyazaki's hand, like that's the real, these are more important to me than the movies because uh, as I understand it, the man is thinking on paper so he has like a general outline of what his uh, the movie's going to be, but he this is all thought work, mm -hmm. and he's just sitting down with a piece of paper, jotting this stuff down, and a lot of what's in here is not going to make it into the flick, but it's it's just it's his process. If you've seen the the documentary where he's like looking at his his uh, his storyboards. And he closes his second with a little stopwatch. You have to like document like down to the second how long this scene is going to uh, take to transpire. Hang on. Look at the drawing at home. Like pause and look at the drawing for a minute of... Wow. Thousands and thousands wow. of pages of this stuff, man. And uh, if you were good to buy these books here in the States, it would have been like about $1,300 to get all of these books. But I got 22 of these fuckers, dude for I think it might be 400 bucks and it's a steal the exercise in storytelling like as a cartoonist one of the places what what I've been doing uh is I'm laying out my my new Red Room comics and at the like before breakfast I'll sit down with these and just like look at the compositions mm -hmm. and just see like sort of what's possible with the picture plane it's just a good uh, treat for your eyeballs before you engage in this same kind of practice of laying out your stuff. Another thing that I've been doing is going through these and uh, trying to figure out like what you can make a comic out of this, mm -hmm. but you don't need every single image. So like, what are the important drawings to tell a comic book story because it's so subtle a lot of this material you know like it's it's second by second keyframe type shits but it's all in here you can follow along so clearly i knew an animator who did who made some comics in the early 2000s i remember talking shop with him and he would write this way yeah. like storyboard wise and we and i talked to him about it and he said and then he would go through and he would like cut so much of it out because it was like, which panels do you actually need? Right. You need, you need different information if you're going to animate it than if you're if you're doing a comic. And uh, and it was really interesting. It always stuck with me as a writing method. Yeah. That was atypical, but made so much sense. That idea of like you put it all in and then you start cutting away. Right. Miller talks about that with Dark Knight One. Yeah. So it, it, it's always stuck in my head as like 
interesting way to work, an interesting exercise. It's almost the size, you know, it's the same scale as those eight panel grids that Lapham used in Stray Bullets. And I think he operated the same way. The function of having those same size panels was so that he could keep mixing and rearranging, which is the same thing that Miller said about his Dark Knight pages. You know, I'll say this too. If you were going to work that way, you know, like like the Dave Lapham eight panel grid or, or 10 panel grid, maybe whatever this would work out to, it would lend itself then to being a phone comic you know, just roll those panels under that. It's almost modular right, building yeah. that way where it's the same size panels. Yeah, totally. So this is the macro episode to let you guys know that these things are out there and they freaking exist. But I fully anticipate us, Jimmy, doing more kind of micro episodes where we go through one of these at a time. You know, like maybe maybe watch the movie that weekend or something. And That'd be fascinating. I, I would love to do an episode like that. We should definitely try that and see how it goes. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. Here's Nausicaa, man. One of the first uh, Ghibli flicks when it was Ghibli. Or maybe it's right before uh, Ghibli. That might be a fun one, too, because then we could look at the manga. Yeah. We could watch the anime. We could talk about you know what we're seeing between all of them. Yeah, for sure, man. But it's all it's all in there. Like Like just the astounding draftsmanship. Uh, obviously reduced a touch, but not by much. It's about typing paper size, maybe legal paper size. It's uh, astounding the clarity of what's on those pages. Several inches to work for these drawings, and they're just achieved so magnificently. Each of these comes bound, uh, like there's a tipped in book that I have no idea. Yeah, it's such a bummer that this stuff, that, that there aren't English. You know, do a scanlation of that book. Totally. You know, let us know, because I'm sure that's information about, you know, each of these the process of each of these yeah. uh, movies, stories, development. Yeah, so, I mean, right before you guys, there is 5,000 pieces of paper with Miyazaki's hand on it, and you can find these. These are, like, some people know about them, some people don't. Like, right. I posted the images of this on uh, online, and, like, Jill Thompson was like, what, what is that? I need that. Um, in the States, there, there are Kino Kuni book bookstores in like Seattle, Chicago. There might be a New York, LA one. These things are marked up so much, but at least they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, at least they're there. Uh, I think it'll be cool to take a look. This is uh, the castle of uh, Cagliostro. This is that Lupin the Third movie, which is, um, you know, that's like where, where Miyazaki kind of kind of got, got his break. Like, what you guys know about those Lupin episodes where he's got the green, the green jacket. Those are the ones, man, that are the Miyazaki joints. And just uh, the slapstick in here, seeing how he's able to do it. I was literally going through this laughing. Do you, uh, do you know, looking at these, how different they are than Otomo's Akira storyboards? Because they feel very different to me. They do. Like, like Otomo's stuff is like set piece design. Yeah. This stuff is full storytelling, animation, expressions. There's like very little expression in the uh, Otomo uh, Otomo stuff. Um, One of the Christmas books that I haven't had a chance to really go through is Anime Architecture. Oh, you may yeah, have yeah, seen yeah. That. yeah. And, and it's so interesting, the pieces that we have access to now, you know, to go from storyboards to seeing those sets being visually constructed and, and you know, from imagination to like the finished drawings. The stuff we have resources for, like you really can see entire processes of how they build these stories and worlds. It's true. So just like for the purposes of this video, man, I'm showing you guys the uh, the sexy Miyazaki stuff, but we've got it all. Like we've got 22, 24 of these things, man. So like one of my favorite movies isn't even uh, a Miyazaki joint. Like, you watch this one, you only need to watch it once, you'll never watch it again, because it'll just tear your freaking heart out. But uh, the storyboard's different hand. The director is responsible for, for all of this stuff. And you see different hand, uh, very tight. I have um, two storyboard collections, too. If we start going down this rabbit hole, I have Satoshi Khan's Paprika. And I don't know if, if he draws the storyboards or not, but it's it would it would be, again, they look different than these. So yeah. it's real interesting to me. And we've done a storyboard episode uh, on, I guess it was mostly on live action. But the storyboard's such an interesting model. And if you get into storyboards, like you can even find like Martin Scorsese doing storyboards for Raging Bull. And they're way less technical than something like this from a drawing standpoint. But you can see them as like notes, you know, notes on a draft. Yeah. And, and what information can you put in there? And as a tool for making comics, I mean, the storyboard has a lot to offer. Another Takahata joint, man. 
you just see like the different hands that he's applying. And this one's very imaginative, a lot of surrealism. That's interesting. The the again the drawings, simple, clear. You know, can All see them from a, dis, dif, a distance. I can clearly see them. You know, even at small size. It's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. The world we live in. <laughs> that this stuff exists. Oh, it's Yonobashi. It feels like film school, comic school. And you know what I was going to say before we started rolling. Look wow, I love whenever Lots you see a color. color. Beautiful. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, Miyazaki will get colorful. Uh, if you're attending like a comic school, yeah, this has to be in the library. When oh, you do your yeah. little tour, look in their library and see if this stuff's there because how can't it be? Right. Yeah, These feel like, like textbooks. Like I could not leave Japan without without this a, was a, grip, good, a grip a good of these choice. things, man. And we will go through these individually in, in, fu in future episodes. Boy, the color's blowing my mind. Yeah, man. It adds such another dimension to this stuff. Because then you get mood and all these things. Everybody gets overshadowed by Miyazaki when you think Studio Ghibli. But there, there's, there's several people at hand. Uh, I think this is what he, Miyazaki was working on during the... Um, documentary yeah. but you know what i don't think so because like th one of these books he's got wash and he's in he's using watercolor and things this is one of those that's like super licensed uh comics but there's there's just so much good stuff and and there's even uh a couple storyboard books that are done by goro miyazaki like his son has has taken up the mantle and the boy could draw he's a he's a heck of an artist man and he's got that name to live up to man so you know that the pressure of that Anyhow, man, this is a micro episode. What I, what I want the kayfabers to do is put something in the comments, put the word out. Which one of these do you want to go through on the microscopic level to, to begin? Because this is a rabbit hole that we could go down uh, for quite some time, Jimmy. I love this idea. Like, like to watch the anime and then to get into these, I think that's just going to be a lot of fun. For sure, That's man. a good idea for an episode. Yeah, people dug our like, uh, funny pages movie review thing. This could be so much uh, richer and probably a more uh, positive conversation. Well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, K Fabers, we want to let you know about the Patreon that we have out there. Uh, a lot of people are having early access to our videos by way of that Patreon, so support us at any level you're comfortable with. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what you have out there, man. Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Alive, The Plain Janes, and Hulk Grand Design are my most recent books uh, available wherever you buy books and comics. You may have to pre-order the Hulk Grand Design, but go ahead and do that if you haven't already. That is going to be a book I'm very proud of. Um, you can also join my Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see more of my art and you can download some of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics there. Red Room, the antisocial network, and Red Room trigger warnings are my latest comics that I have out in the wild. Red Room is the, is the project that I'm working on these days. I'm serializing the new Red Room comics on my Patreon. Uh, three bucks gets you the archive. I have all the uh, old material up there as we speak. So you're getting, like, for less than a penny a page, you're getting a whole lot of comics. Um, hit up my link tree in the description below where you could order the physical books and support the Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Jimmy, tell the people what else we have out there, man. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, all kinds of cool stuff at our spread shop. That link is also below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give me those marching orders, Jimmy. We'll be on our way. Watch more anime? <laughs>